Isotopes are various forms of an element. If an element was a car brand, the different models or styles it comes in would be the different types of isotopes. They look a bit different and have different characteristics, but the one thing they have in common is that they originate from the same brand. So the isotopes may look different and have different characteristics, but they originate from the same type of atom. We know that the number of protons is the signature of each atom. Each atom will have different number of protons. So carbon will always have six protons, oxygen will always have eight protons, hydrogen will always have one proton, and so on. So all isotopes of the same atom will always have the same number of protons. The thing that changes with isotopes is the number of neutrons. And because the number of neutrons changes, the mass number will also change. Because remember, the mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in each atom. So of course, the change in the number of neutrons will also reflect the mass number. Let's take carbon for example. This is carbon right off of the periodic table, so it is in its original form. We know it has six protons. It has six electrons because we know it's neutral. We know it's neutral because the example is right off the periodic table. Also, there is no indication otherwise. We know it also has six neutrons. We calculate this by subtracting the atomic number by the mass number. I'm going to show you what this would look like in regular notation so you can compare it side by side to isotope notation. So we start by putting the elemental symbol followed by the mass number at the top and atomic number at the bottom. Now let's compare this carbon in its regular form to carbon in its isotope form. So carbon has various isotopes, too many to write down, but I'm going to give you an example of carbon-13 and carbon-14. Both are isotopes of carbon. We can write an isotope in two ways. One is by writing the element, then adding a dash, followed by the mass number. The other way is writing the elemental symbol, the mass number at the top, and the atomic number at the bottom. Notice that the atomic number remains 6, because remember, the atomic number never changes. It is the element's signature, and if carbon did not have 6 protons, it would not be carbon. Notice our mass number changes to 13. What influences the mass number? The number of protons and neutrons, right? So if the number of protons didn't change, that means that the number of neutrons in this atom did change. So remember, two ways of writing an isotope. Let's look at the isotope carbon-14. We can write it out like this. Right off the bat, we know this carbon has a mass number of 14. We can also write it like this, with the mass number of 14 on top and the atomic number of 6 at the bottom. So looking at the original carbon on the left, the 6 protons and 6 neutrons is what make the mass number 12. So just keep this in mind when we do a count of neutrons and protons of the isotope. Starting with carbon-13, we have six protons because the atomic number is six. We have the same amount of electrons because this is a neutral atom. We find the number of neutrons by subtracting six from 13 and we get seven. So six protons and seven neutrons is what gives us a mass number of 13. Looking at carbon-14, we have six protons, six electrons, and to find the number of neutrons, we subtract six from 14 and we get eight neutrons. So the six protons and eight neutrons is what gives us the mass number of 14. Let's finish off with a few practice problems. I've written each practice problem in the three different ways you can see isotopes written. So the first way is in isotope notation. All the information you need to find the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons is given right here. We know the atomic number is 92, so the number of protons is 92, number of electrons is the same, 92, and to find the neutrons, we subtract 92 from 238, and we get 146. Next, we have sodium, and the mass number is given, but we're missing the atomic number. Simply, we look at the periodic table, find sodium, and see that the atomic number is 11 given here. Keep in mind, if you were to get a problem that looks like this, you will likely be given a part of the periodic table to find the atomic number. Atomic number is not something you are expected to memorize. 
Okay, so we have 11 protons, 11 electrons, and 12 neutrons. Lastly, we know this is an isotope because the way it is written. Specifically, it has a dash with a number at the end that does not match the mass number of hydrogen on the periodic table. Also, we see the atomic number on the periodic table is 1. So with this information, let's fill out the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Protons, we have 1, 1 electron, 2 neutrons. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. Until next time.